Hi, I'm Lynn Marriott, co-founder of Vision 54. And I'm Pia Nielsen, the other co-founder of Vision 54. And what we have here today is our Golf Parent for the Future booklet. And we're going to share a few things about it that we think are very important for the young golfer to perform better and also develop very positively as a human being. Yeah, we know for a junior to really excel, you need to have external skills like technique, like knowing the rules of golf, fitness, but you also need internal skills. You need to learn to manage yourself. So the team around the players, the player and the team around, including the parents, we need to create a culture where this can be developed. And it's so important because ultimately on, on the golf course, the player is by themselves. So there are all these internal skills that are very important and those we're going to introduce to you now. You know, and Pia, the, the research on this is conclusive. For you to become a top performer and have this positive human development, you need to learn, the young golfer needs to learn how to be more self-referencing and self-regulating. So the four insights that we'll go through in this booklet are about that, for the golfer to become their own best coach. Yeah, so the first one is going to be to differentiate between I and you. Then we go on to differentiate between who you are and what you do. The third one is how you create a good state. And the fourth one, how to best give feedback. So stay tuned and we'll get going with the first one. So our first insight is having the clear boundary between you and I, meaning that the parent is having their experience and the junior golfer is having theirs. And to keep that boundary very clear. By having that boundary, the child or the young golfer is able to create more self-esteem and self-confidence. So there are two things that we need to learn as adults. The first one is to ask the player first, what is their experience? What did they learn? How did it go? Before we as adults start speaking and saying what we think. It's so critical to learn to be more into self-management and learn to, to manage our own game. So remember that, always ask the golfer junior first. And be careful with your language, parents, because it's the child making the stroke, and it's the child putting the ball, and it's the child getting the scholarship. When you use, we need to get the ball in the hole in fewer strokes, or we made a birdie there, or we need to get a scholarship, that language becomes very confusing to the young golfer. Yeah, and we are even a lot on the LPGA and PGA Tour, and even there, we sometimes need to bring up with the caddies or parents or coaches that get it all confused. And the progress of the player to be more self-sufficient and having self-confidence goes slower. So remember that, ask the players, juniors first about all of these things. So I enjoyed sharing this with you. Yeah, Did you? me too. And if I, I need to learn more about that, there are exercises in this booklet and questions I can learn even more. Yeah. So stay tuned for our next insight. So we have a saying that is, you're a human being who plays golf, not a golfer who happened to be a human being. And Lynn, what do we mean by that? Well, what we know from the research about long-term athletic development is we need to allow the child to be a human being first. And then, of course, they are a golfer. And that our conversations with them are always reinforcing who they are as a human being not just always speaking about their outcomes or their scores or I often say like a parent will say hey why did you three putt out there as if the child intended to three putt. Yeah, it's very critical and when players get really okay with that separating who they are from the outcome they can go really low because they have no fear or anything they can just freely play and play really well. And another piece with this is when we talk about the, who you are and what you do that we always focus on the things under our control. Because in golf, of course, we want low scores, we might even want to win. And we can influence that, but we can't really control it. So in the speaking to the junior, it's always breaking down to the pieces of the game that's actually under our control. Like how our routines went, how our body language was, how the focus was over the shot, those kind of things. And then this can really, really help to achieve the goals. Because even that child who did three putt, you can reinforce the effort that maybe they had good speed on the putt or they made clear decisions. It was just the three putt, that was the outcome, but please reinforce the effort. Yes, so now we're going to go on to the third insight, so stay tuned for that. So the next insight is about our state. And any golfer gets affected by the people around us and the state they have. It can be parents, it could be caddies, it could be other coaches. You know, Lynn, 
the way you are with your state now makes me not think you appreciate what I'm saying. Did that affect you? Yeah. So <laughs> well, you really need to check up on this and ask the junior player first, what state is good for me to have so you can have fun playing and play well? Well, of course, because your child will always pick up on your, on your body language and how you're walking more than what you're saying. So make sure that your state is communicating what you want to communicate. In fact, it was a couple years ago we did a little intervention with a parent and a child. And we had the child tell the father, hey, what was it that she didn't like about the way her dad walked along the fairway when she was playing? And she said, you know, Dad, you're always standing there with your arms across your chest and I think you're going to yell at me when you get home or you didn't like how I putted on the last hole. And he was standing right there and he goes, I never do that with his arms folded across his chest. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And I had some years ago too, I was watching some Swedish juniors and on the 14th and 15th hole, I was talking to another teacher and we were talking something about the backswing and we were making some swings. And after a round, the player came up and said, you know, 14 and 15 there, you know, what was wrong with my swing? Because I saw that you were like showing something about the backswing and I'm like, wow. I mean, what I was doing had nothing to do with her, but she was always picking up on my body language on the things I was doing in my state. So I learned a big lesson. So be clear about the state that you have, that you're communicating what you want your child to receive. Very, very important. And next, we have the fourth insight. It's going to be about feedback. Our fourth insight is how to give feedback in a way where you can draw out the learning and the child can actually improve, but also increase confidence. Yeah, so we want to figure out the formula where we really get to this to build the competence and confidence. And the most simple way we've ever done it and the best way is always ask questions after a round, after a tournament, after a season. What was good? What can be better? And how are you going to do it? So you want to start with good because you want to always reinforce, no matter the outcome or the score, that there are things that happened out there that, that went very well and that the effort was there. So always start with good. And when you do that, again going back to an earlier insight, let the child begin without you starting in. Let the child tell you what they did well. Yeah, and then we can add after that. The next one is better. And we've always learned that let's start with fewer better so make sure it gets done. So we usually say don't get to give us more than one till we know something can happen because after better is how. It needs to go into action. You need to actually do something. So the good better how has been really good for us but we learned a lot about the ratio too. Yeah, I mean minimally this comes from the research out there on the way the brain is organized that your ratio for good to better needs to be three to one. And for some children with low self-esteem we often increase that to a 10 to 1 ratio. Yeah. 10 goods to 1 better. So it's really fun. We had this dad that had two daughters and one liked golf a lot and the other one didn't and he was kind of devastated. But we were just talking and we shared how you can talk about good better how after practices or after playing and and we met him about three weeks later and he said this is like a miracle. My, my other daughter now when I talk to her differently after golf, she's totally different. She started liking it and, and only by him changing what kind of questions asked after playing or after practicing. And a tour player that we coach, she got this into her brain with her coach that of course she does hard stats when she's finishing the round, but she'd always finish with her hard statistics and turn the card around and do a good better how. And she would share that with her coach and her parents, this is a tour player, because they'd often focus on all the stats from the round and what she needed to improve on. But when they did the good, better, how, it boiled down to one better that she knew she could go do and put action on. So now you've learned about the four insights. And take them one at a time, read and reflect and do some practice. This is kind of like us as support people to the players, our little training camp to be better at what we are doing. Yes. So the juniors can play the best possible and they can enjoy the game tremendously and grow as human beings. Because we know if we learn better skills in terms of supporting the young golfer, they're going to play better and they're going to enjoy it more and they're going to stay in the game for a lifetime. 
So we've given you a lot of information, but remember we have the booklet Golf Parent for the Future where you can get re-reminded and actually learn even more about this insight. And you just go to vision54.com to find that and other support materials. Yeah. And thank you to the Junior Golf Association of Arizona and the Southwest Section PGA for this opportunity to share with you our insights on being a golf parent for the future.